Okay, hey guys. Um, I'm just making this video because a lot of my friends that have tried to play Morrowind have said that it's really hard, especially in the beginning. And it can be pretty hard to get your feet in Morrowind. So this is going to be a little guide video on how to get started nice and with a lot of money. So I skipped past all this part when I, I've already made all my character and everything. So once you're finished with that, you're going to go over here and this big nice platter that is worth $650, you're going to pick that up, go right into your inventory, and drop it. Now, as you'll see, the guards will tell you, oh, we'll let you off on a warning for now. And if you do it again, you'll go to jail, blah, blah, blah. Pick it right back up. They don't even notice. It's pretty funny. But you can go over here and you can do that with this. These books, too, they're each worth $50. And the trick, you want to get as far away as possible because you're going to open it, take it, go right into your inventory as fast as you can, and then drop it. And I'll talk to you again and just repeat this process until you've taken most, if not all, of the books. Sometimes he may catch you before you can drop it. It's pretty tough, but you can always save it and try again. So here we go. Now we have three of those. I'm not even going to try to get that one right now. But okay, going on to the next room. You're going to go down here to the end of the hallway, to the right, and just completely loot these sacks. These ingredients are useful if you're if you want to be an alchemist, but also they can be sold. I think I just saw something in there was worth a hundred gold, but um, they don't wear they don't weigh much, so you can just take all of them over here. Take this dagger. No need to equip it. The game will tell you to equip it, but you don't need to for now. Steal all of the uh, silverware. The lock pick. It's important. Okay, now we're going to equip this lockpick, use it on this chest, if he will open it. Alright, okay, there we go, finally. Open this, this will have 31 gold in it, and then just loot these shelves. Uh, you don't need to take these, they're only worth one gold, they'll just weigh you down. baskets have some more ingredients in them and then you're ready to go out the door so this is going to be a little outside area going into the next building and the game will tell you automatically to open up this barrel and get the ring in it you take the rest it'll tell you to uh, equip the ring but you don't really need to since you're going to be doing some other stuff with it now go as you normally would as the game tells you and talk to this guy about your duties, this will start the main quest. And once you're through with that, you can go on through the door. Now, right here to the left, this guy, you'll be doing a lot of business with him at the beginning. His name's Fargon, and he says he thinks he lost his ring. And it happens that you found this ring back in that barrel. Uh, you're gonna wanna give it to him, because what happens is, he talks to his friend that runs the trade house over here, and now, he likes you, and you're going to get good prices with the trade house merchant, and that's important for this beginning part of the game. So then, you're going to head over here, over by the lighthouse, and uh, for some reason, people like to hide their stuff in these little hollowed out tree trunks. So, you're going to get up on a nice little perch on these rocks. May take a couple tries, it's a little tricky to get, but jump right in there. And look, there's an enchanted battle axe, yay. <laughs> Pretty cool loot for level one. So then you're gonna go up over here and walk right into this one. This this one just has a cup and some gold pieces in it. 25. So now you have a lot of stuff to sell and a good weapon. Now, depending on what kind of player you chose, throughout this guide, we'll find... We already found that enchanted axe, but we'll also get an enchanted sword. So, whether you choose a blunt-type character or 
a sword character and we'll also find a dagger so any type of play type really that you choose other than an archer you'll have a good weapon to start out with so we're gonna go get our enchanted sword go out to the edge of the town right here with the silt strider to your right some houses go up to these signs you'll see over here on the left are signs for Narmok and Lo Ode just follow that trail across this little bridge and walking through here in these little swamps you can find some good alchemical ingredients if you're into that but we're not going to go for those right now all of these mushrooms on the trees you can see mushrooms on the ground there's like five different types of them and if you're planning on doing the mages guild you should probably pick them up because one of your first quests will just be a gathering mission where you'll have to go get different types of mushrooms so if you're looking forward to that go ahead and get a head start so we keep walking you might notice something on the ground up here and if you look up there's a guy falling out of the sky okay his name's Tario take all this stuff and his journal if you he had an iron spark sword on him which is a really good starting out enchanted weapon I like to put on his clothes because when you're talking to people, they respect you more in these nice, expensive robes. And they will actually tell you that you look nice. And if you read his journal, it says that he's trying to create a spell that will let him fly. And if you look at these scrolls, these are more of an Easter egg from the game over here. Fortify acrobatics 1,000 points for 7 seconds. Pretty much what's that, what that is going to do is shoot you way up into the sky and then your acrobatics aren't going to be fortified when you fall down so you will die that's what happened to him and it's a fun thing to mess around with if you get a levitation potion you can survive the fall and you can jump halfway across the map so it's really fun to play around with and if you're not into it you can sell them they're worth quite a bit too so heading back into town we're gonna go to the we're gonna head off to the trade house now If only I could run a little faster. Seems like in this game you run really slow, and then in Oblivion you run super, super fast. But anyway. This door is locked. You're probably going to have to come back if you plan on picking it. Even if you pick the tower, you probably, the tower star sign, you probably won't be able to pick it at such a low level. Okay. So... We're going to completely just ignore him for now and go upstairs and up here. Now, I picked the tower sign, which gives me a spell or a power once a day. I can open a lock up to level 50. So I'm going to use that on this door. It says your crime has been reported, but nobody calls the guards Let's on you. And they won't be mad at you. Quick. Close the door behind you. If you want to pick this lock, you can. But under the bed, you'll see Imperial Newt Skate Curious. This is worth money and also is good light or medium armor, I'm pretty sure. Light, no, light armor. Also, under this pillow is an enchanted dagger. So now we have a dagger, an axe, and a sword, all of which you could pick. The characters I like to play, I play with swords, so I would sell the dagger and the axe. So we'll go up to a rill. He already kind of likes you because of your little deal with Fargoth. So, sell him all of this stuff that you got. Let's see. I think I just sold him the package of Chaos Cosades, which I was not supposed to do, but just pay attention. Make sure you don't sell anything too important. So, ooh. Bring that down to something he can afford. Okay. So now we have quite a bit of money. I like to play um, a spellcaster, kind of like a battle mage. If you're into that, then I would highly suggest you buy the fireball spell from him. It will come in handy, especially in the beginning. 
So once we come off of there, actually, we'll go back in. Now, remember you gave Fargoff that ring earlier. This guy upstairs, if you talk to him, apparently has some beef with Fargoff. He's... Basically, the story is Fargoth likes to place bets with these guys, and he lost a lot of bets. And he hasn't been paying back his gold, so he wants you to find it for him. And apparently, Fargoth has a hiding place. So, tell him you'll do it. You'll find his hiding place and steal his gold back. Now, you can try go around looking for leads, but the easiest thing to do is we're going to go up to the lighthouse and wait until nighttime. That way, that way, we'll see Fargoth when he's going to his hiding place, and we'll watch him mess around with his money, and then we'll go down and steal it. There's a valuable book up here that you can take, and it's also a skill book. Go up here. All right. Now we have a nice little overlook of the town. I'll wait. Okay. So now we should be able to see. There's Fargoth over there. If you can kind of make it out, he's sneaking. Also, usually he has a torch with him to kind of make him distinctive between the villagers, but he'll kind of creep around for a little bit, he'll go up to different trees to try to trick you, make you think he's hiding them in the different trees, but his real hiding place is in that stump over there. I'm just saying this now because I don't feel like going through the whole animation of him walking around. Okay, waiting does not work. You have to actually watch Fargoth put his money in. So here I am back up here in the daytime. I didn't even know he could do it in the daytime, but there he is. Sure enough, putting his money in that little hollow tree stump. In the middle of the day with everybody watching him. So, okay, now we'll come out. Uh, it's dangerous looking. Oh, 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 okay, there we go. He's still sneaking. Look at that. Okay, we'll go over here. Open this up. Engraved Ring of Healing. Journeyman's Lockpick. And 300 gold. So now you have that ring back. You can use it. You also have 300 gold. Don't give it back to the quest giver because he won't give you anything. He won't even give you disposition. He'll just say thanks and take it. So now you have... 1,197 gold, which is a pretty good start off, but we're going to even go farther. We're going to get some more. And this one, this is an actual quest. We're going to head off here, right off this shack part of town. And this is where the fireball spell comes in handy. You don't have to fight these mud crabs, but you can, and it's a good way to train. Because mud crabs is all you'll find around here. Mud, mud crabs and scribs and quamo foragers. They will attack you, though, so you'll have to fight them. I feel casting the spell. There we go. See that enchantment right there? Lightning bolt. Okay. okay, he's dead. Keep on going. And right here, as you can see, is a dead body. Go up to it. Processus Vitellus. Take his tax record and his gold. Now, why is he just laying out here dead? Well, somebody killed him. Tax collectors are usually not very well liked within the community. <laughs> so, I'll go back over here to the very first place you started out, talking to the same annoying guy in the robes. Okay, so once you're back, what back in this place, you're gonna want to talk to this guy and talk about the murder. He'll pretty much hire you to find the killer. You give him some gold, 
but you give him the gold you found on the body, but once you find the killer, you get a lot more in return. You can go all around town asking people who they thought did it, and you can eventually find out by asking, but I already know who did it, so we'll just head up to his shack. He's pretty straightforward about it, too. He has no shame. He just says, yep, I killed the guy. So, over here, the guy's name is Foreign Gilmuth. Talk to him. Did you do it? Yep, I killed him. And you can not tell the people, or you can tell the people, but he doesn't give you anything, so, I mean, geez. And then he'll try to kill you. It takes a little bit. That okay, after you finally kill him, take Processus Vitalius's ring as proof that he killed him. Some gold, and he has a book on his floor. Take that. You can also use his uh, bed to sleep in as a legal place to sleep. And his chest usually doesn't have anything good in it. Just some gold and a bottle of some sort or a plate. Okay, so once you head back, tell him you found who killed him. What do you want? And he gives you 500 gold. So now you're back where you started. Except now you have an enchanted weapon, an enchanted ring, some stuff to sell, extra money, and almost, once you sell this stuff, you'll have about 2,000 gold, which is an awesome amount to start the game with. You'll be able to buy any set of armor you want, any amount of spells, right off the bat. So, I hope that helps you guys. Subscribe if you want to support me and see more. Comment on what you want me to play next. If you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye.